Hey guys, and welcome to one of my educational videos, which I decided to do because I had a very rare gun uh, come in this week and it's about to be sold. And I wanted to show it to you before it leaves the office. It is a prototype for the P38. You can see it here as it showed up on our website. And uh, it is the Army pistol or model AP. I'm gonna talk a little bit about that, but before I do, let's take a look at some obvious changes. You see this? I'm wearing gloves. I'm wearing gloves for two reasons. First of all, I want you to know I heard your feedback and I paid attention. Uh, since I've been doing these videos, I've gotten a number of comments that why aren't you wearing gloves? Now, I've been doing this for 30 years. I've never had a thumbprint on my finish. I've never had corrosion due to handling because every time I handle a gun, I wipe it down with oil, lots of oil. I handle oil all day long and I go home with the softest hands in town. Um, but I noticed on those comments, I had 95 people give a thumbs up on wear gloves. So. I decided to listen to you on these expensive prototypes. I'm wearing gloves today. But second, second, I'm wearing gloves because we are in the middle of the coronavirus panic. We've been told to uh, quarantine, uh, keep your distance, uh, with no public gatherings. So it's a scary time. If you're watching this concurrent to us releasing it, then you know how I'm feeling right now. And that's one of the, another reason I'm wearing gloves. But if you're watching this maybe six months or a year from now and everything turned out fine, please let me know because I'm a little bit worried. Okay, so for this video, I'm gonna show you a very rare gun, give you some uh, lead up, unto the, up to the production of the gun and the P38. But also at the very end, if you stay to the end, I'm gonna give you an industry update in light of the coronavirus. What's, what I've noticed has changed about the industry already and where I see all this going. So. Stay tuned if you wanna hear uh, my commentary on the coronavirus and this industry. So this is the gun that you've all been waiting for. I'm gonna get close ups. I'm actually gonna take it apart side by side with this Zero Series. You can see that this Zero Series is uh, number 268, uh, which means it's the, the 200th and 68th one made. Uh, this AP, Army Pistol, is number 44. This is a prototype that led to the production of the P38. So quite an exciting gun, very few of these known, and I'm gonna take it apart uh, in front of you, uh, a close up so you can see the developmental differences. But let's first lead up to the development of the P38. So Walther, of course, was uh, wanting to get military contracts during World War I, and generally German soldiers were using the Luger. The Luger had a lot of fans. I don't want to badmouth the Luger because I'll get a lot of nasty emails from you guys saying don't badmouth the Luger. But the truth is it had a lot of moving parts and it was very expensive. So Walther was making smaller pistols like the Model 4. And one very rare gun, they only made a thousand of these. And this is kind of a prototype which never really took off, never went into full production. They were made in nine millimeter, which is important. So again, they were trying to get military contracts. This never took off. I, I, I'm not sure why, but what I've heard is the blowback feature on a nine millimeter was not consistently reliable. And so this in nine millimeter, uh, never was accepted. And uh, this is number 1007, and they went up to about 1030. So there was actually 1030 made. They're all considered prototypes, but these were made in the 1915 to 1917 range. If you know Model 6s, you never see them this beautiful. This is an actually beautiful gun. Glad I have my gloves on. Uh, one feature, just as an aside, they, had, uh, they used horn grips. And on, uh, interestingly, I see little uh, little holes, you can see them on the side and on the bo bottom, tiny holes, which are uh, bore holes. Uh, so there are bores that eat the, the horn grips, and this is, a, a, I guess, a common problem back then that if you store them in the attic for a while, they will get bores and make little holes in them. But other than that, it's a beautiful gun. I just mention it because I find it as an interesting aside. And in looking at this gun, it looks a, a bit like a Model 4, uh, you see here, here's a Model 4. This is just like, uh, which was in 32 caliber. This is a bigger version of the Model 4. It comes in nine millimeter. It was hopefully gonna be accepted by the military. It never was. So the reason that's important to note is because that was Walder's first attempt at making a bigger pistol in nine millimeter. The same thing happened in World War II. 
uh, they were commonly using the Luger and the Luger was well accepted by most people, but they were expensive, a lot of moving parts. I, I'm told if you drop it in the mud, they, they tend to not function properly. So they needed um, a, a sturdier gun. Other countries, such as the United States, were, were using the 1911 Colt, which was more reliable in difficult um, conditions. So while they're again trying to get, you know, they're businessmen, they're trying to get contracts. So they, of course, they had the uh, Walther PP. This is actually a very early PP. It's number uh, 137. So this was the 137th gun made. It's got some early features, um, but it comes in 7.65, made in 1929. So in 1929, they had a very successful run at the PP and later the PPK. So then Waller said, what can we do to get a military contract? Um, they wanted to make a nine millimeter. They actually blew this up a little bit um, and made it a little bit bigger, about the size of the Model 6. Um, they blew one up and there's a prototype. I don't have one to show you, but it came in nine millimeter. But again, the blowback feature didn't work consistently. So it, it didn't work, but they had to come up with a whole new design to take the PP and make it into a nine millimeter that could be used by the military. And that's where they began production of the P-38. And you can see right away how different the design is from the PP and the PPK. Um, so let's just focus in on this Army pistol and uh, take some close-ups. Before the Army pistol, by the way, there was a model MP for military pistol. It was in nine millimeter, it was very similar. It had reinforced slide like this one does, but there was no bridge here, there was a couple other uh, features that made it unreliable. So this AP was an improvement over the MP. And let's take a few minutes to take this apart and compare it to the gun that we all know uh, more universally as the P-38. Okay, let's take a uh, look at this prototype Army pistol versus the very early P-38. The, the Army pistols made in around 1935, between 35 and 37. Uh, they, I think there was only about 50 of these made, and they were all prototypes. There's only a couple known to still exist. Um, there are a couple of them uh, featured on Forgotten Weapons, mostly from Rock Island Auction. And this actually is one that came, it didn't come to me from Rock Island, but originally came from Rock Island. And Ian did a video uh, with this gun in it, number 44, um, and versus the very early P-38, which this is probably uh, early 1940. Uh, and was issued to the military, as you can see, by the Waffen stamps, which are all over the place. People ask me all the time about the little white stuff in there. Um, that was added later. Um, these were painted originally, from what I understand. Uh, I wasn't in the factory at the time, but my understanding is these are factory original, this marking, the red and the white. But the rest of this white was added by collectors. I tend not to add it or take it out. I just leave it alone. But some collectors will put that in there to highlight the markings. Uh, so this is a, a zero series. So let's start from uh, one end and go to the other. Let's start at the front sight. You can see, uh, first of all, both of these are come in nine millimeter. And you can see the front sights um, are slightly different. One has a crown and the other one is more uh, straight cut. Um, and um, the AP added, the MP did not have the bridge, um, and this one does have the bridge. You can see that's this piece right here to hold the barrel steady. Uh, the MP didn't have that, so this was an improvement. The AP added the bridge. Um, you can also see one of the, uh, the takedown lever, uh, slightly different, uh, this takedown lever versus this takedown lever, uh, but the slide stop, is relatively the same. The safety is relatively the same. They don't have the S and F, but it's relatively same. And the, the um, rear sight, the rear sight is relatively the same, just a slight difference on the rear sight. But the biggest difference that you'll notice is this had the hidden hammer. Uh, now the Luger had the hidden hammer. Walder, most of their semi-automatics all had the hidden hammer. I'm not sure why they decided to ha I add the hammer other than this is single action. It, it doesn't fire in, in double action. Where, and this, of course, um, is an improvement for the military because it does have the hammer and it does uh, work in 
double action. So it'll work by cocking it or not cocking it. Um, so that probably was a change that the military appreciated um, and an improvement in the P-38. So let me begin to take these apart for you guys. Um, the first thing I want to do is pull the magazine out. You'll see that um, this, uh, the Zero Series magazines were numbered on the side. Uh, this one is not matching, but it is an early Zero Series. You can see that. And also, the grips were Waffen stamped and numbered. Uh, you'll just have to trust me on that, but there's a Waffen stamp and a small uh, crudely numbered. Um, so I'm going to set these aside, but both, both grips, these are made of Bakelite. Has a cassonette kind of sound. You can see that they're both numbered to the gun and Waffen stamped. Let me get that out of the way so you can see some of the internals. Um, here's the AP. Um, now I mentioned the bore. Oh, let, let's first of all, um, you can see this is, uh, that is the number. I don't know what 87 is, but this is number 44. So this is a matching mag and the grips are not made of Bakelite, but are made of wood. Now th these, uh, these grips are made of wood and they are also numbered, not Waffen stamp. Cause again, these were never issued. They were just prototypes. Um, probably went out for a series of trials, but you can see these are number 44. Um, also, remember I mentioned the, uh, the bore, uh, not the bore of the gun, but the, uh, the horn bore. Um, this also has little circular holes, very tiny circular holes. I'm going to see if we can get that. Very tiny circular holes, which we all know about wood bores. Uh, so again, interestingly, these probably sat in an attic and... Uh, were eaten by some kind of insect, very tiny, uh, otherwise a pristine gun. Um, and now we can begin to see the internals. The sears are about the same, so that design is the same. Also the trigger bar is very much the same. Uh, the writing on this pistol, it says Walder Patent. Let me get that. Uh, writing here says Walder Patent and the serial number. You can see 044 and the serial number on the magazine is matching. Uh, and then on this side, you can see, you can see the Walder banner. You can see Army pistol and nine millimeter. Um, and that's as opposed to this one, as opposed to this gun. Which you can see very cl clearly P38 and the Walder banner. And then of course this one has three Waffen stamps. You can. One of them is very light, but there are three Waffen stamps there. You see that little dot there? Um, that is a bluing drip. And if a gun is original finish, they most often these early guns will have that bluing drip. Um, just an interesting feature. Uh, let me go ahead and do the takedown lever and take this down. So after I do the takedown lever, then you have to put it on safe. And then this bar pops up. This is, this is, uh, takes the place of the hammer. Um, and if we look at the internals, it has a locking block, just like the P38. And interestingly, uh, you probably can't see it, but down inside there, let's get this down inside there is the rectangular firing pin and the internal hammer. Also, there is no extractor. It, the extractor is internal. And if we look at the early P38, we take this one down, drop the hammer, it slides off. You can see the locking block. A little bit of difference, but generally the same locking block, uh, barrel, the AP barrel is not numbered. The Zero Series is. The locking block on the Zero Series is numbered and Waffen stamped. And uh, again, this is a first variation P38. It does have the rectangular firing pin as does the model AP. So these are very similar, only slight changes. Now let me remind you, we call this a first, a first variation Zero Series because very quickly I can show you, this is just a standard World War II P38 that most of you are pretty familiar with that has an external extractor, whereas both of these guns 
do not have the external extractor. So that had an internal extractor, which I assume when they moved it externally, it was a better design because they did that really quickly. Also, the firing pin, if you look in here, the firing pin is round. If you look in here, the firing pin is round as opposed to the early variations, they were rectangular. No idea why that improved it, but it was clearly a change that was made very quickly in early 1940. Now let's look inside the frame. I mentioned the sear trigger bar. Uh, this has a, a different feature here. Um, I apologize, I don't know what that is, but there is a different feature there. Take, oh, take down, I just saw that. The takedown lever here is number 44. So the takedown lever was numbered to the gun. Uh, let's look at the internals. You can see the internal hammer versus the external hammer. Other than that, I see only slight differences. You see the uh, trigger spring here versus the AP. Uh, the trigger spring is elsewhere. Uh, down inside there, I can't even see. I can see it, but it would be hard to show. The trigger spring is down inside there. And then also the frame right here is numbered uh, 44. Um, so those are the differences. You do see the springs are a little bit different. Um, and then, of course, the back, the back is different. So those are the differences between these two pistols, the AP and a very early Zero Series. Uh, these are the differences in the internal design. Hey, I hope you enjoyed that overview of a very rare pistol, the Army pistol prototype of the P38. Uh, for some of you, it was a lot of minutia, uh, maybe not that interesting, but for me, it's such a rare gun, I just had to share it with you. Now, I started off by saying I wanted to talk about my thoughts on the coronavirus. Not, I don't want to talk about nationally. I, I think our, we need to support our leaders who are trying to do everything they can to keep us safe. But here's what's going on in the gun industry. Just like any panic, what we're seeing is people are buying more and more guns and more and more ammunition. Um, we are not a store, we're an internet store. So actually this month, month of March to, uh, 2020, um, we're having our, our best month ever in terms of sales because people are buying high-end guns. Now, I can't figure that out because the stock market is down 30%. My portfolio has been crushed. But people are buying guns at this time when there's generally people are concerned about the future. So that's an interesting sidelight. Also, they're canceling all gun shows. Um, so all the gun shows this month and next month have pretty much all been canceled. So the only way we're getting guns, we can't go to shows anymore. A lot of the auctions are not allowing live auction, uh, but you can do internet. So I think that's probably one of the reasons we're seeing increased sales is people can't, they can't get their fix. They can't go to a gun show. They can't uh, sell things or pick up things. So we're getting a lot of guns in the mail. A lot of people are sending us guns because they want to turn it into cash. They're raising cash, which is wise. And then other people are just seeing this as a great opportunity to buy guns. And uh, we're selling more guns uh, than any month in the history of the company. So um, this might be a wave of the future. I do think in general, gun shows were beginning to die off, meaning every year I go, the attendance gets lower and lower and um, vendors uh, are less and less. Uh, this coronavirus, I think, is going to take a huge hit on gun shows, gun shows, and I do believe that more and more people are going to be buying through the internet. So, when you buy guns, make sure you go so to somebody you trust. Obviously, we highly recommend Legacy Collectibles. If you want to sell guns, uh, contact us. If you want to buy guns, go to our website and check out some of our offerings. Hey, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this overview. And make sure you like and subscribe. Hit the notification bell so that you know when we do another video. Oh my gosh, it's brutal outside. Uh, the, if you live in the eastern United States, this is what it's like June, July, and August. Now just imagine you're a collectible firearm in somebody's safe, in their bedroom drawer, in their man cave, or in their closet. This is how your guns feel. And that's why Legacy Collectibles has decided to add this new product to our website. If you go to our website in the accessories, you will see that we've added a YouTube store. The idea here is we want to have products like this. We'll be adding more products later. But um, the first product we wanted to add to our YouTube store was the dehumidifier because I'm excited about this. It's not a new invention, but it's certainly new to me. Uh, I've always had a dehumidifier in my basement. Also, we have several safes in the basement. 
Um, and the problem is the dehumidifier is running nonstop. We really keep an eye on that. Really does a good job in the basement. But when I open up my safe, it's still a little muggy in there. In fact, from time to time, some of my holsters get a little moldy. And then I discovered this product, love it. It's called Evadry, let me get it right side up, called Evadry. Uh, you just hang it in your safe and this orange, as it begins to absorb the humidity in uh, any small space, really, it turns green. Their estimate, depending on the humidity, it takes, it, this will last for about a month. And then you just pull out this handy plug, plug it in overnight, it dries it out, and you put it back in your safe. I haven't tried this for 10 years, but I'm told this will last up to 10 years, which is uh, very economical for a $30 investment. You not only protect your investments, but also you support our channel. That's right. We don't uh, take any paid advertising and we've been doing this for about a year. Uh, really have no way to support the channel other than your support. So go to our YouTube store and check out some of our products. I highly recommend these dehumidifiers. It comes in two sizes. Uh, this is for a larger safe. This is for a smaller area. And also if you're like me, I have air conditioning in my home, but in my closet where I keep my clothes and stuff, it sometimes get a, it gets a little musty in there. This is great for any small space and there's no need to plug it in. You don't need the electrical outlet until you get to the place where you have to dry it out. Check it out on our website and thank you for supporting our channel.